There's power in the name of Jesus. Your name is great, and we praise you, we bless you, we magnify, we lift up the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, that it's in the name of Jesus. Prayers are answered. Miracles are accomplished. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We pray now as we turn our attention to your word, we ask for your anointing on Brother Nui as he, as he shares your word. And we pray that our ears and our hearts will be open to what you speak to us this morning, Holy Spirit, for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Welcome, Nui, as he comes, or as he's here. <laughs> and let's give him another hand. Every Sunday, I don't know if you know, but he spends hours. Say hours. Of course, it's air conditioned, so I don't think he minds it too much. But <laughs> he spends hours getting the message out to you, to those who aren't able to be here with us, and to beyond, whoever we can like and share it to. So give him another hand. <laughs> for all that he's been doing. Thank you, Nui. Before you sit down, Pastor. Yeah, <laughs> perfect timing. Um, tomorrow is Pastor's birthday. And since, well, since we're not going to see her tomorrow, <laughs> we have a little something for you as mom brings it up behind you. And um, there is... Because, um, you know, we can't have candles and blow things out. I was actually thinking of getting like a piece of cardboard and light, have, light the candles at Pastor Go. <laughs> but, you know, maybe not. But yes, tomorrow is Pastor's birthday. So, Pastor, we want to honor you. And church, can we sing happy birthday to Pastor? You guys ready? You guys, you guys ready? Okay. One, two, three. Happy It is moose, though. Yes. I was looking at to see if I could make the slices small enough to share. It's available at Costco if you want. Uh, <laughs> if I really wanted to sponsor, it'd be like only sixty dollars for membership from last year. Um, anywho, <laughs> happy birthday, Pastor. The title of my message today is Factory Reset. Now, how many of you ever heard of Factory Reset? You know what it is? You know what happens? Factory Reset. That is when you get to your phone or your computer or anything else like that, and it might be too much information in it, it's acting slow, and one of the things you would do to clear it up, to help it move better, is reset it. Take it back to its original form. Now, one bad thing about factory reset is that it erases everything. And so what computer companies recommend, what cell phone companies, what Apple, Samsung, all those guys, Android, whatever, what they recommend is that if you need to factory reset something, back up all your data. Get a hard drive, back it up, get it on top of there, because the last thing that pops up on the screen right before you factory reset is the phone or the computer telling you, you sure? <laughs> Are you sure you want to do this? Because everything that is on here, we will get rid of. It's become more real to me that God is calling for a factory reset for his children. We have not been able to operate the normal way we used to. We have become overwhelmed with other stuff that we have taken for granted, what God has given us.
We can't gather normally. We can't do things how we used to do. And it's not just nationwide, it's worldwide. In 2 Chronicles chapter 15, it says, Then the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, son of Odin. Ob, oh, not Odin, sorry. Odin. And he went out to meet King Asa. And as, and as he was returning from battle, Listen to me, Asa, he shouted. Listen, all you people of Judah and Benjamin. The Lord will stay with you as long as you stay with him. Whenever you seek him, you will find him. But if you abandon him, he will abandon you. For a long time, Israel was, out, was without the true God, without a priest to teach and without the law to instruct them. But whenever they were in trouble and turned to the Lord, the God of Israel, and sought him, they found him. During those dark times, it was not safe to travel. People troubled. Problems troubled the people of every land. Nations fought against nations and the city and city against city. For God was troubling them for, with every kind of problem. But as for you, be strong and courageous for your work will be rewarded. When Asa heard this message from Azariah the prophet, he took courage and removed all detestable idols from the land of Judah and Benjamin and in the towns that he had captured in the hills of Ephraim. And he repaired the altar of the Lord, which stood in front of the entry room of the Lord's temple. Then Asa called together all the people of Judah and Benjamin along with the people of Ephraim, Manasseh, and Simeon, who had settled among them, for many from Israel had moved to Judah during Asa's reign. When they saw the Lord God was with him, the people gathered at Jerusalem in the late spring during the 15th year of Asa's reign. On that day, they sacrificed to the Lord 700 cattle and 7,000 sheep and goats from the plunder they had taken in battle. Then they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord, the God of their ancestors, with all their heart and soul. They agreed that anyone who refused to seek the Lord, the God of Israel, will be put to death, whether young, old, man, or woman. They shouted out their oath of loyalty to the Lord with trumpets blaring, ram's horns sounding. All of Judah were happy about this covenant, for they had entered into it with all their heart. They earnestly sought after God. They found him, and the Lord gave them rest from their enemies on every side. It seems more and more that before the world stopped, that we were seeking more of the blessing than the blesser. The term, people walk through the door of the, of the church and say, I've come to get my blessing. And let's not get it wrong. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is Jehovah Zikkanu. He is Jehovah Nisi. He is all of that. But the one thing that God is not is that he is not Santa. He doesn't just give gifts. You don't sit on God's lap and be like, were you a good boy? Were you a good girl? What blessing do you want today? That's not who he is. God requires obedience. God requires obedience. And even what's going on right now, the debate that is happening around the world and how much division there is happening, the first thing we have to realize is this. That the vision that is happening right now in the families, in churches, and in the countries of the world is not from God. It is not from God. It is from the devil. And if the devil can keep us occupied with this division, then the church of God cannot do what it's called to do. A divided house cannot stand. 
I saw this on TikTok. If you don't know what TikTok is, it's a social media platform. Pretty much really short videos. I love it because there's a lot of funny people on there, but there's a lot of people who push agendas as well. And they just pop up on your page. And one of the TikToks I saw, someone went on top of there and say, why would you do this when God has given you the freedom for this? Why would you be, why would you, well, actually it was about mask. Why would you wear a mask and put yourself in prison when God has given you, you had the God-given freedom not to do this? Let's get one thing perfectly straight here, okay? All right? The mask issue isn't a kingdom issue. It doesn't bother God as much as you think it does. Now, God does tell you to use wisdom. He does tell you to use wisdom. But wearing a mask, not wearing a mask, it's not, it is not a decision between heaven or hell. It is not like that. It really isn't. But we have taken it to the point where there are people in churches. There are churches who are saying, if you wear a mask, you believe the lie and everything else like that. You are a sheep and everything else, and you're going to go to hell. Which is kind of funny to use the word sheep, because I'm pretty sure the Bible does say that one day God will separate the sheep from the goats. It's not a kingdom issue. The vaccination shot is not a kingdom issue. If you want to get vaccinated, go get vaccinated. If you don't want to get vaccinated, hey, whatever. But use wisdom nonetheless. That is the one thing that God has called us to do, is to use wisdom. So we need to really stop throwing God's name around all willy-nilly and go over there and say, no, Jesus said not to get the shot. Really? Where? Jesus didn't get jabbed. Yes, he did. He got jabbed on the cross. He got a spear in his side. Oh, 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 you mean like a vaccine? Oh, sorry. Number one, Jesus wouldn't have to get a vaccine. He's God. What would God need a vaccine for? You are not God. Things affect you differently than it does God himself. Things affect you differently than it does the angels themselves. Use wisdom. So what are we called to do? What has God called us to do when times of hardship and division come up? Number one, he calls us to pray for our leaders. To pray for our leaders. Then stand up against what is wrong. It is not stand up against what is wrong, then pray for our leaders. No, you pray for the leaders first. Because the reason they're in the position that they're in is because God placed them there. Whether you like them or not. Whether you agree with their philosophy or not. Whether you're part of the same political party or not. They are placed there because God said so. So the first thing you must do is to pray for them. Stand up against what is wrong. Don't do things that would go against the word of God. If something was to happen that did not line up with the word of God, then yes, don't do it. But here's something for you. You better know the word of God to make sure it, does, it lines up with the word of God or doesn't line up with the word of God. You can't just take something out of context and say, the Bible said this. Really? Where? Well, my pastor said that, and your pastor doesn't know the word. And neither do you. Here's one very important one that seems to be lost today. You need to love your neighbors as you love yourself. You need to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And if you have a hard time loving your neighbor, may I ask you something? What, why do you not love yourself?
And of course, this is from Royal Rangers, the golden rule, do unto others as you would have done unto you. What does that mean? It means that we're not called to harass people straight out of it. You are to treat them the same way you want to be treated. It's amazing how much people will give frustration to other people and wonder why they get frustration in return. Because you are to treat others as you would want to be treated, not how they ought to be treating you. The Bible doesn't say, treat them how they ought to be treating you. No, you treat them how you want to be treated. Everything going on, the division, is not from God. It is from the devil. But God will use this time to draw his children back to him. In Malachi chapter 3, verses 6 to 7, it says, I am the Lord and I do not change. That is why you descendants of Jacob are not already destroyed. Have you ever thought about that? The amount of times the children of Israel messed up and got God angry. And they should have received his wrath. God remembered his covenant that he had with their forefathers and he did not change. By all rights, reading the Bible by itself, you have to ask the question, why is Israel still around? Because God remembered the covenant he had with Abraham. And he does not change. Ever since the days of your ancestors, you have scorned my decrees and failed to obey them. Now return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of heaven's armies. We must, be, we must beware that we don't bring a Cain style of worship. In Genesis chapter 4, we all know the story of Cain and Abel. We all know the ending of the story about Cain and Abel. I'm going to be starting at verse 3 in Genesis 4. When it was time for the harvest, Cain presented some of his crops as gifts to the Lord. And Abel also brought a gift, the best portions of the firstborn of lambs of his flock. The Lord accepted Abel's and his gift, but he did not accept Cain and his gift. This made Cain very angry and he looked dejected. Why are you so angry, the Lord said to Cain? Why do you look so dejected? You'll be accepted if you do what is right. But if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you, but you must subdue it and be its master. One day Cain suggested to his brother, let's go out into the fields. And while they were in the fields, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Afterwards, the Lord asked Cain, where is your brother? Where is Abel? I don't know. Cain responded, am I my brother's keeper? Then the Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out from the ground. Now you are cursed and banished from the ground which, you have, which has swallowed your brother's blood. No longer will the ground yield good crops for you. No matter how hard you work, from now on you will be homeless wanderer on the earth. Cain might have given his best. I don't think so because the Bible doesn't say that he did. It says that Cain brought some fruits. And I've heard this preached so many different times, you know, God was angry at Cain because, you know, you know, burning fruit doesn't smell as good as burning fat does, you know, so that's more, no, no, that's not, that's actually not even it. It's a great illustration though. And I have to say this, if you ever barbecue and you just have, you know, when that fat hits that coals, it drips off. And yeah, no, that just, that is why the Daniel fast is so hard, Tim. Um, <laughs> you can talk to him after about that one. And I don't know if you ever like got grapes and put it in a pan or try to just like, like whole grapes, not like grape juice. 
and just like try to sear them off. They turn really mushy. It turns really nasty. I mean, it's a great illustration, but that's not it. You see, Cain brought an offering to God expecting to be blessed, but he didn't bring the right offering. In fact, we can go back to Genesis 3.21 when Adam and Eve got kicked out of a garden. We actually see the first sacrifice happen. God killed an animal to make clothes for Adam and Eve. So there was a requirement that needed to be met when you're giving an offering to God. Abel brought the correct one, Cain did not. Abel brought his best. He brought the very best that he had, the firstborn lambs of his flock, while Cain just bought what he had left over. In John 4:24. Jesus says, but a time is coming, indeed it is here now, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. For God is spirit, so those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We may not bring fruits like Cain, but Cain Cain came with his own agenda and God would not honor it. We can become guilty of worshiping in our agenda. We can pick and choose when we praise and what we bring to praise. But God doesn't accept it. We act as if we are here to worship, so Lord, you owe me. And he doesn't know us anything. Because it has never been about us. It has never been what we can bring to God. God isn't interested in our plans, our way, or our agenda. God isn't interested in motion Christianity. What does that mean? It's going through the motions of it and calling yourself holy. It's a worship song, so I know I need to raise my hands. And the only thing moving in my heart is the blood because my heart has to pump a little more to make sure my hands stay up. God literally stopped the world to remind us of who he is. He literally stopped the world, stopped everything that was going on to remind his children who he is. Because we have become guilty of going through the motions. We have become guilty of coming to church with our own agenda. Israel often put it this way. He said, we can become guilty, you know, when we go into church We walk in with our coffee, and the worship team doesn't play a song that we like, so we kind of just sit there and drink our coffee and wait for the song that we know. Or we act that, you know, God, if your spirit is moving, if the word is good, if they play that one song that I like, if they play that one song that I like, oh, Lord, be ready, because I'm going to give you praise like never before. God doesn't accept that. He doesn't accept that at all. To worship him in spirit and in truth means it is your entireness. It is everything within you. And the only way you can give God everything that is within you is to push away and get rid of everything that's blocking it.
if a law was passed today that all church, all churches were to close in person and online, could you enter into him? Could you worship him where you're at? The Lord is calling, trying to get your attention. God is calling us to factory reset, to get rid of all that has come in the way of who he is, because at the end of it all, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters but him. Every problem, every pandemic, every division, every storm means nothing because he is everything. He is everything. God is calling his children, he is calling his church to factory reset, to get rid of everything that is in the way and is blocking us from him. From truly seeing who he is. To remind the church that nothing else matters but him. He's not interested in our agenda. He's not interested in our motions. He is not interested in what you say or what you do or how you do it or what your stand is. What your political stand. God does not have a political party. God is about his kingdom. He is not interested in anything else like that because nothing else matters. Nothing else. Nothing else. 
I'm going to ask that every head be bowed and every eye be closed because right now this is a holy moment. And whether you're here in person or watching online, God is calling you back to him, to factory reset, to eliminate all that has come in the way. Is he all you really want? Is he all you really need? He's calling his children back to him. Father, we come before you right now, Lord. And first and foremost, Lord, we are sorry. Father, we are sorry for putting so many things in front of you when you are worth it all. Nothing else matters but you, Lord. Father, forgive us for getting caught and just going through the motions, coming with our own agenda. Because, Lord, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. Father, remind us daily. Reveal it to us in your word. Reveal it to us, Lord every single day that you are everything you are everything that we need and everything that we want in Jesus name amen Lord, we thank you for your word. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for speaking to each of us.
if you're hearing him speak to you, maybe for the first time, you hear him speaking to your heart this morning, drawing you in, drawing you closer to himself. This is your time. This is your chance to respond, to say yes. If that describes you, if you want to say yes to him this morning, whether it's for the very first time, asking him to forgive your sins, or if it's saying yes to him in some area of your life that you know you need to give over to him, this is your moment. This is the time. This is the place. This is your opportunity. With everyone's eyes still closed, honoring each other, this is a holy moment. If you want to say yes to him today, for any reason, I want you in his presence to just lift your hand. Just lift your hand. And we'll pray for you. Father, you see our hands. You see our hearts. You see our minds. For some, there might be a little bit of fear because we don't know. We don't know what this really leads to. But what it leads to is love and joy and peace and a relationship with God like we've never known before and it leads if this is the first time that we're saying yes to him it leads to life eternal life in heaven and an awareness of God's presence in this life like we've never known. Lord, I thank you for those who right now have said yes to you. They're not saying yes to me. They're saying yes to you. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive my sins. Everything I've ever thought or said or done that was not right, that was not honoring to you. Please forgive me. Forgive me. And I thank you for this opportunity to respond to your love and to make my heart right with you. Thank you, Jesus that you loved me so much, you were willing to give your life on the cross for me. Thank you, God, that you raised Jesus from the dead to give me victory over sin and eternal death. Thank you. Thank you that you love me so much. Thank you for forgiving my sins. I ask you to come into my life. Make me aware of your presence in me and with me every moment of every day. Help me, God, to say yes to the things I need to say yes to. And help me, God, to say no to the things I need to say no to. I want to live for you. And God, I want to live with you for eternity. Thank you for this moment, this moment of exchange where I give you my sin. I give you my mess. And you give me eternal life. You give me yourself, your presence. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. 
And I thank you, Lord, for those this morning who are saying yes to you for something that you are showing them in their hearts is not right. And they want to say yes to you instead of saying yes to the world or saying yes to themselves. Lord, in this moment, we say yes to you. In obedience, we want to say yes to you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I lay down my own ways, my own thoughts. I lay down trying to do it myself. And I say yes to you. It's a moment of surrender. And God, it's a moment of freedom. Because your word tells us if we follow the truth, it will set us free. And so we thank you for that this morning. Thank you for freedom. Freedom from sin. Freedom from self. Freedom from whatever may have been holding us captive, holding us back. We're free in you. Thank you, Lord. Church, thank him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. That you set us free. And it's not just free for this moment. It's free. Freedom. Forever. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we can trust your love to know that you only want what's best for us. You want only what will draw us closer to you. Thank you for that, Lord. And I thank you for those who have said yes to you this morning, Holy Spirit. Bless them. Keep them. Speak to them, Lord, through your word. Refresh them. Encourage them. And God, use them to share their freedom with someone else. Thank you, God, for this moment. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your messenger. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to our hearts. Bless us now, Lord, as we go from here. Keep us, guide us. And God, make us a blessing. Make us a blessing. Bring people into our path, Lord, who need you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.